With the rising cost of living, many of us are looking for ways to cut back on our spending. So today I'm going to share with you nine items that I have over the years stopped buying, some have come back, some I'm still not buying, that have helped me keep my grocery spend in check week after week. Now I'm gonna say some things that you might think, oh, no, that's not for me, and that's absolutely fine, but these are just some things that I have tried and have had differing success with. So here they are, and I'm ready to share. So the first one is bin bags or bin liners. So I had this realization when I was trying to reduce the amount of plastic that I was using in my household. I realized that this was a type of plastic that I was essentially purchasing to just throw away. And that felt kind of wasteful. Everything about my bin was washable and let's face it, I was washing it every week pretty much anyway. So why was I needing to buy the bin liners? On top of that, I realized that we actually had a food waste bin. So a lot of the dirty waste was actually going in there. And most of the waste that was going in my bin was a fairly small amount was clean and you know easy to place in the bin without causing too much mess and we're really fortunate here because we have recycling bins too that take a lot of our waste and that all was going into the bin loose already so i realized that actually my main bin didn't really need that bin bag so i stopped purchasing them instead what i do now is i will put the entire contents of my bin just straight into my wheelie bin. Now I'm aware that some councils do not allow you to do this. And you know, this is one of those things that you're just gonna have to put up with, unfortunately. But maybe you're the sort of person that doesn't need a bin bag for your bin. We do it with things like waste paper bins. You know, I definitely do it with the little bin in my bathroom. Most of this is clean rubbish. So I don't need to use bin bags. So number two is laundry detergent. So this is an interesting one. So quite a while back, this was when my eldest daughter was born, I decided to switch to an eco egg. So this is a little egg that's filled with some beads that you just chuck in your washing and it lasts a hell of a lot more washes than your standard bottle of laundry detergent. So over the course of a couple of years, I think I replenished the insides of my eco egg maybe once or twice. Now there are some washes that you may still want to use laundry detergent. If it's a particularly messy wash or you've got something you know, particularly icky on it, then yes, you might want to continue la using laundry detergent for those. But for lightly soiled washes, you know, things like your school uniforms or you know, swimming stuff, these things don't need a huge amount of washing and the Eco Egg is perfect for those. Number three is fresh herbs. So a few years back I decided to start my own herb garden and got some really great staple herbs in a packet that cost me about a quid. I think there's about seven different ones and I had a few pots in my garden and I grew these and it meant that I had a constant supply of fresh herbs. Now, if you're really smart, you can also dry these herbs. You can look up on Pinterest how you can dry these out. I used to dry my herbs out on a tray in my airing cupboard. It takes you know, a few days to dry them out, but then you can just crush them up and put them in the pots that you've already got with the rest of your dried herbs. But for those of you that love fresh herbs, maybe like a sprig of parsley or fresh basil to make pesto, then this is a great solution and it constantly replenishes itself. Some of them might be needed to be moved inside and placed on a windowsill in the winter because they don't like the UK cold weather quite so much. But if you look after them, they will last you essentially forever. Number four, aluminium foil or tin foil. Now, growing up, this used to be like a staple in our house. We always had aluminium foil. It would go around sandwiches. We put it over pots like yogurts and things in the fridge. Um, we basically just used it for everything. We'd wrap jacket potatoes in it. When you start looking at the alternatives that are out there for foil, you realize you probably don't need it that much. I think the only time I use it now is for cooking my turkey at Christmas. The rest of the time, it's not an essential product for me. If you look at the things you use it for, so this could be wrapping up your sandwiches. Well, why not get a reusable sandwich bag for that? 
or it could be something like your jacket potatoes. Well, actually, they will do just fine on a skewer, on a baking tray, rubbed in a little bit of oil and some seasoning. They don't need wrapping up. When you start looking for alternative solutions to your foil usage, you will find that there are plenty of great options out there. Five, shampoo and conditioner. So there was a period of time, probably about two or three years, where I just didn't buy shampoo or conditioner. And actually I opted for more natural methods of cleaning my hair. So I didn't let my hair go dirty and I have a whole post about this on my website, but I was using things like vinegar to condition my hair. Even now with my children, I do not use shampoo on their hair and I will use only a little bit of conditioner just to make sure it's clean and that it's not free. Obviously, they're still getting their hair washed and it gets a good scrub, but they have beautiful, healthy hair and they're perfectly clean too. Instead of shampoo and conditioner, you might want to opt for something like a shampoo or a conditioner bar. So these are a low waste alternative, but they still give your hair those familiar sort of bubbly hair, clean hair feelings. If you don't want to jump right in with cleaning your hair with things like bicarbonate of soda and vinegar, then you might want to go for one of those halfway house solutions instead. Shampoo and conditioner can be hugely expensive and if you've got a couple of long hair kids like I have then it can be something that you're having to purchase regularly. So this could be a good solution if you want to cut something out of your weekly spend. So number six is some cosmetics and toiletries. Now I'm not big on makeup, I do use more of it now than I used to, but I still try and limit this as much as possible. I try and use as many natural products where I can. So there are things like moisturizers, instead I will try and use things like coconut oil rather than you know fancy dedicated moisturizers. Also things like soap, I will go for natural soaps rather than things like the pumping options that can be really expensive and come in lots of plastic packaging too. It can be a good idea to have a look at the things that you are using and see if there are cheaper or just whether you even need these things at all. Plus, if you're looking for some options to make your own cosmetics or your own toiletries, then go and turn to Pinterest. You might find that there's something that uses really low cost ingredients that can make something that could last you a long time. So number seven was baby stuff. So obviously I had babies when I wrote this and now my kids are both at school. So I'm not so much in this world, but I do remember going to the supermarket and thinking, I'm not buying anything down the baby aisle. And this is because we'd gone for some reusable alternatives. So this would be things such as cloth nappies. And we use these for both of my kids. So we got double the usage out of them. We also had things like reusable baby wipes. We had a set for hands and faces and we had a set for bums too. We also, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to breastfeed. So I didn't need any of the you know, formula or other bottle paraphernalia that goes with that. And we also didn't use anything like, you know, baby creams or baby shampoos because of the reasons I've already mentioned in this video. It can be really helpful to look at the baby products that you are using and see if you can find a streamlined alternative or whether you even need those things at all. One of my top tips to new parents is not to over purchase stuff in the beginning because we found that we bought a load of stuff and we just never used it. So be more conscious about the baby products that you are buying week by week and you could find that there's a significant saving to be had. So number eight is food bags. So these feel a lot like the bin liners that I mentioned earlier. So you use them and then you're almost instantly throwing them away. They have a very limited time frame. It can just be like half a day, basically from the morning where you make your sandwiches up until lunchtime when you eat those sandwiches. Now you could get some more use out of these by saving them. Most of them don't get dirty, maybe a few breadcrumbs and you could use them again or you could look for alternatives around your house. So why not use a Tupperware box if it's for things that are, you know, like nuts, peanuts, or snacks that you might be using for the kids. If it's your sandwiches, why not just reuse those bags? Or maybe you could use the bags that bread comes in from the supermarket. Again, a box could do, or a reusable food bag. There are so many great alternatives to these. 
And finally, number nine is kitchen roll. Now this is one that has crept back into our lives. And this is largely because our kids are a little bit older and they're less messy now. Back in the early days when my kids were young and they were super duper messy, we found that we were just using our reusable baby wipes. So if they'd eat their dinner, we would run those around the, you know, the kitchen table or along a worktop or over their faces. And that served most of our uses for kitchen roll. Now it's more like cleaning the oil off their bike. So having kitchen roll makes more sense. But it is something that you might want to consider. There are lots of great reusable kitchen roll options out there. There are some fancy ones you can get on Etsy. I've even made my own in the past and they looked absolutely amazing. So why not have a look, see if this is something you could either reduce your usage of by having some reusable alternatives as well, or if it's something that you can just eliminate entirely. My top tip in all of this is to just think more consciously about what you're using. Just because everybody else uses them or just because you've been using them a lot in the past doesn't mean that you need them right now. Doesn't mean that your family needs to use them. There could be some things that you are paying for unnecessarily. A big thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.